A few months have passed since everyone was cured of the mutation and life was thriving on Sodor. It seemed as if Sodor was fully functioning once again. Sir Topham Hatt had the nuclear plant torn down to prevent any future incidents. All the engines were acting like their normal selves. All of course, except for one. Oliver the Great Western Engine has been acting very strange since the incident. Sometimes he felt depressed as if no one wanted him on Sodor, and other times he seemed a bit grouchy. Duck, who works alongside with Oliver, noticed this and decided to confront him about it. Oliver, are you alright? You've been acting very strange. Oliver didn't say anything at first. Duck tried to cheer him up. Come on, Oliver. I'm your best friend. You can tell me anything. <sighs> I'm fine, Duck. Well, you sure as hell don't sound fine, Oliver. What's wrong? Are you going to take my passengers and leave, or are you just gonna stand there gossiping? Oliver, I don't like this attitude. It's not the Great Western way. Oh, for Christ's sake, will you shut the hell up? Everything is the Great Western way with you. You care more about your pride than any of your friends. So why don't you just go stick it, you no-good waddling twit? Duck was horrified. He had never heard Oliver yell before. Oliver puffed away before Duck could say anything. Not like it mattered or anything. He was speechless. Later that day, Duck decided to confront Sir Topham Hatt about it. Sir, Oliver's been acting very suspicious lately, but he won't tell me why. Hmm, I see. I shall speak to Oliver about this tonight. That night, Sir Topham Hatt went to visit Oliver. But when he got to his shed, he noticed that Oliver wasn't there. Hmm, I didn't assign him with any tasks tonight. This is very strange indeed. I shall send a search party to look for him. I will report this to Duck, and he left. When he got to Duck's shed, he explained the situation to him. Oliver's not at his shed? Oh, that can't be good. You and I must go out to look for him. Duck didn't hesitate. When Sir Topham Hatt climbed on board, he puffed away to search for Oliver. Meanwhile, Percy was on his nightly mail run. Things were going smoothly when he saw Oliver in the distance. He whistled to get Oliver's attention, but didn't get a response. Feeling worried, Percy quickly raced towards Oliver. But what he saw next shocked him. There in the distance was a mutant. But Percy recognized this mutant. You! You threw me off the rails! The mutant didn't say anything. It just roared. Percy raced away as fast as he could, with the mutated Oliver chasing after him. But this time, Percy was determined to outrun him. At the next signal box, Percy ordered the signalman to change the points as he went to the other line. The signalman did so just in time. Percy was tired but triumphant. And when the coast was clear, Percy raced back to the sheds. When he got back to the sheds, he did not dare move. Thomas noticed this. Percy, are you all right? Percy explained what he saw to Thomas. But that's impossible. We cured all the mutants. I know what I saw, Thomas. There are still mutants out there. All right, Percy. I'll go look into it with Sir Topham Hatt. Meanwhile, Duck was still searching for Oliver at Knapford Station. Edward was there. Any luck, Duck? Unfortunately, no, but we're still looking. Then Thomas puffed in. Duck, I may know where Oliver is. Wait, you've seen him? Well, I didn't, but Percy did, and he claims to have seen him as a mutant. Sir Topham Hatt was listening to the conversation. Hmm, that's very suspicious indeed. Where's Percy now? Back at the sheds, he's still pretty shook about it. Duck, take me to Tidmouth. I would like to have a word with Percy. Percy was still idling at the sheds when Duck and Sir Topham Hatt got there. Percy, Thomas told me that you saw Oliver. Is that true? Y yes, sir, but he was mutated. Mutated? 
but my antidote cured all the engines. Obviously not Oliver. Something suspicious is going on and I don't like it. I agree with Percy, sir. Oliver has not been himself lately. Yes, Duck, you were telling me. We will keep searching for Oliver and we won't give up until we find him. Yes, sir. Boy, Percy. Bye, Duck, and be careful. Percy was understandably worried about his friend. The word soon spread about Oliver's possible mutation and all the engines were talking about it. Some engines were wondering if Percy might have been right, while others find it to be utter nonsense. But if there was one thing all the engines could agree on, it was that Oliver was acting very strange indeed. A few days went by and Sir Topham Hatt decided to do some research in his office. He called up friends from the mainland asking about the mutation. But after not getting any answers, he decided to take matters into his own hands. He went through his paperwork looking for Oliver's files. Once he found them, he examined them very carefully and came to a shocking discovery. Oh my, I have to tell Duck about this. And he left his office to go find Duck. He found Duck who was about to take a passenger train. Juck, before you leave, I need to speak with you. About what, sir? About Oliver. I was looking through his files, and apparently his blueprints were stolen by the Germans. Really? How so? They wanted to make some type of indestructible bioweapon for war. But apparently the experiment went wrong and they abandoned it. The engine was sent to the scrapyards where after a while the mutation went dormant. And then Douglas rescued that engine and now he's Oliver of Sodor. So wait a minute, let me get this straight. I'm best friends with a bioweapon? I'm afraid so, and I think the mutation might have reactivated when the explosion hit. So Oliver was a mutation long before the explosion even happened. I wish I was lying, Duck. I really do. So, if Douglas never rescued Oliver, we wouldn't be having this problem right now. Don't you dare think that, Duck. Oliver is a main part of our railway, and I will do anything to help him. I really hope you're right, sir. We must spread the word to everyone on Sodor. Duck, meet me at Knapford later on today. I'm going to tell the other engines to meet me there as well. And with that, Duck set off to find the others to tell them about the meeting. Then he heard a voice. Duck, where are you? Oliver, is that you? Sure enough, it was Oliver puffing beside him. Listen, Duck, I'm really sorry about what happened a couple of days ago. There's something I really need to tell you about me. That you're a bioweapon? Yes, Sir Topham had kind of beat me to it. I never wanted to be a bioweapon, Montague. I want to be a normal engine like everyone else. It's just, throughout my life, I've been scared, wondering if my mutation will ever come back after it went dormant all this time. But ever since that explosion, I've just been very paranoid. Please, Montague, I'm asking you as my best friend. I need your help. Duck was horrified after hearing this. Don't worry, Oliver. I'll do everything in my power to help you. Later that day, all the engines were gathered at Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt was explaining to the engines about Oliver's predicament. Then Duck arrived. He had just finished pulling a passenger train. Everyone, I was just talking to Oliver, and he needs all of our help. He then told Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines what Oliver had said. So wait. Oliver is some type of bioweapon? That's what I heard, Gordon. Well, if that's the case, we're all in danger, and it's all Douglas's fault. Hey, how is this my fault? We wouldn't be in danger right now if you had just left Oliver there for scrap. The engines were horrified by James's remark, and there was a long silence. Until Douglas broke the silence. Hey, laddie. I regret a lot of things in my life, but rescuing Oliver from scrap isn't one of them. I agree with Douglas. Oliver is a part of our railway and a friend to us all. Even Gordon was cross with James. 
You ought to be ashamed of yourself for saying that. How would you like it if an engine said to you that you were better off scrapped? James wasn't angry anymore when he heard that. I'm sorry, Douglas. It's just that I'm really fed up with this whole mutation thing. No worries, James. Honestly, I don't blame you. But what are we gonna do about Oliver? I'm currently thinking of something, Percy. I don't know what it is, but we'll get Oliver back to normal. In the meantime, I would like everyone to go back to work. We still have a railway to run after all. And all the engines went back to work. That night, Duck couldn't sleep. He was thinking about what Oliver had said and was thinking about how he was gonna defeat the mutation for good. He then made a decision. All right, I am going to go look for Oliver and fix this situation once and for all. And with that, Duck puffed away, determined to cure Oliver. It didn't take him long to find Oliver, but what he saw was disturbing. Duck, you need to get out of here now. Ah, ah! Fight it, Oliver! You're stronger than that demon! I can't! It's too painful! It wasn't long before the mutant took full control over Oliver. All poor Duck could do was watch in horror as the transformation took place. Then something worse happened. Oliver began to grow spider legs. Fizzling fire boxes. I need to get out of here! and Duck puffed away as fast as he could, with the mutated Oliver not far behind. Meanwhile, Thomas was taking the mail train because Percy was too scared to go out once again. As he was puffing along, he saw Duck in the distance looking very frightened. Thomas, you need to get out of here now! And sure enough, the mutated Oliver was chasing after him. Without thinking, Thomas reversed quickly to get away from the mutant. The two engines puffed away as fast as they could with the mutant Oliver pursuing them. Duck, who was puffing forwards, noticed the signal box, and this gave him an idea. Thomas, keep running. I will warn the signalman to change the points to the sighting when I pass. Thomas continued puffing backwards as fast as he could. When they got to the signal box, Duck ordered the signalman to change the points. He did just that, and Oliver was diverted onto a set of buffers and he crashed right into them. But Thomas and Duck didn't dare stop running. They didn't stop until they got to the smelter's yard. Thomas, I think we'll be safe here for now. Duck, was that Oliver? I'm afraid so, but we need to figure out a way to help him. Then they heard the snapping of a giant claw. Thomas, look out! The two engines quickly raced out of the way. Duck, what was that? I can't really see back there. But Duck didn't answer, for he was horrified by what he saw. Staring right at Duck was a mutant Diesel 10. Thomas, I think it's best if you don't see what's back here. There is one thing I can see, and that's Oliver! Sure enough, using his spider legs, Oliver managed to get back onto the rails and catch up with Thomas and Duck. The two mutants then looked at each other. Then Oliver let out a loud roar and charged at Diesel 10. The Diesel roared back and charged at Oliver, and soon the two mutants began to clash. Duck and Thomas watched in horror as the battle pursued. Using his jaws, Oliver managed to rip Diesel 10's claw clean off. The mutant Diesel 10 screamed in pain as he began to push Oliver. The battle was fierce, and all Thomas and Duck could do was watch. But Duck was having none of it. He began to puff towards the mutants. Thomas tried to stop him. Duck, what are you doing? Thomas, they're gonna kill each other if we don't do something. There's nothing we can do. They're mutants. They're just gonna mutate us. One of those mutants is our friend, and I promised him that I would help him. Oliver, stop. You can't do something this horrible. It just isn't in you. The two mutants stopped to stare at Duck. You can both fight it. I know you can. Duck's right. Let us help you. We can find a way to cure this once and for all. Oliver, I know that deep down inside, 
that you want to be really useful. And the same goes for you, Diesel 10. Oliver managed to take full control over the mutant for about a minute. Duck, Thomas, I never wanted any of this to happen. I know, which is why you need to let us help you. No, I can't put my friends in any more danger. As he said that, the mutant Diesel 10 lunged towards Duck and Thomas. Oh no you don't, and Oliver grabbed Diesel 10. Diesel 10 was about to push Oliver into the incinerator, but using the remaining strength he had, the beast took full control over Oliver and pulled Diesel 10 with him. And the two mutants fell into the incinerator, killing them both. Oliver, no! It's too late, Duck. Oliver's gone. No, he can't be gone! Duck was trying his best not to cry. Thomas tried not to cry too. It's alright, Duck. It's over now. When they got to the nearest signal box, Duck's driver called Sir Topham Hatt for help. Fifteen minutes later, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the scene. What's going on here? Thomas told Sir Topham Hatt everything that happened, for Duck was too distraught to say anything. Oh dear, that's horrible. Duck, I am so sorry for your loss. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. The next morning, there was a huge gathering at Knapford Station to honor the loss of Oliver and Diesel 10. Duck was still mourning over the loss of Oliver. Thomas tried to comfort his friend. Don't worry, Duck. Oliver's in a better place. He can't hurt anyone now. <laughs> I wish there was something I could have done to help him. There was nothing we could have done for Oliver or Diesel 10. Oliver wouldn't want you to be sad. He would want you to celebrate his life, to remember all the good times you two had together. But who's gonna run with me on my branch line? I'm sure Sir Topham Hatt will figure that out. But if it will make you feel better, Percy and I will take turns helping you on the Little Western. Thank you, Thomas. That means a lot. In the meantime, we need to figure out how we're gonna cure the diesels and the road vehicles. There are still mutants out there. But that is a story for another day.